Hey guys, Daniel here from How To Make A Website and in this video we're going to talk about WP Rocket and what are the best settings to get the best website speed. Alright, so WP Rocket is without doubt one of the best WordPress plugins out there. Alright, so with Google changing its algorithm all the time, speed is becoming more and more of a factor on your website. If you have a really slow website, your ranking is not going to be as good as your competitors. So having a really fast website is more important than ever, especially on mobile phones. You can imagine people using your website on a mobile phone for the first time on 4G networks or 5G networks and if it loads too slow they're just going to exit the screen and go back to Google search. So it's really important to have a really fast website and that's where WP Rocket excels. Alright so what are the main features about WP Rocket that are so good? Well basically it allows you to minify your CSS and JavaScript it'll also allow you to defer the JavaScript. And basically what this means is all that unnecessary information that's spread out across your website gets condensed into a file size that's more appropriate for loading on all devices. How this helps you is basically it increases your SEO. Overall, it gives you more conversions. The faster your website, the more people are gonna be visiting your website and the lower the bounce rate is gonna be on your website. That is the most important factor. You know, people don't want to wait seconds for your website to load. They want it literally like within a millisecond, a few milliseconds. So now, you know, Google's saying over two seconds, over 2.5 seconds is way too much time to wait for a website to load. So, you know, you've got to look at that and think about how can I optimize that to be lower. The first step for me is always WP Rocket because it's the easiest way to guarantee it's going to be faster than without having a cache and plugin. The WP Rocket essentially is a caching plugin. There's lots of caching plugins out there. This is a paid service, but by far it is the most valuable paid service there is. It's a one-off fee. Um, we're gonna look at the prices right now. All right, so before I get stuck into the good stuff, which is showing you all the settings that I recommend, I'm gonna quickly go through the pricing structure. Basically, you can see here, we've got the single uh, license for $49 the plus license for $99 and the infinite license for $249. Uh, single license, obviously single website, plus is three websites and infinite is infinite uh, websites. You know, it all comes with support and updates. So if you have any issues, you can always contact them. They're very responsive. I've had some queries before and they've got to back to me very quick, which I'm very impressed. They do have a 100% money back guarantee. And for those who um, would like a deal, check the link in the description below. I do have a link in there with a special offer. All right, so here's some of the main questions related to WP Rocket. Is it available and usable for e-commerce such as WooCommerce and that kind of stuff or multilingual sites? Yes, it is and it's actually really recommended because all those websites like uh, e-commerce, they're very heavy on scripts and they are usually quite slow. So if your website you're finding is pretty slow, and it's a shop or some sort of you know online store it's probably going to be benefiting having WP Rocket and the other question I get is um, you know well does it interfere with any plugins that I currently have it is a possibility but it's very unlikely because WP Rocket is such a huge platform they've really nailed this and partnered with a lot of the huge plugins out there so you really don't have to worry about that reviews right so Trustpilot is probably one of my favorite sources for legitimate reviews, basically because you know you have to go out your way um, and actually make a review on Trustpilot for a product. They've got 1,173 reviews I can see on Trustpilot and they're rated 4.9 out of 5 stars. That to me is a huge indication that this is a trustworthy website and a trustworthy plugin, not to mention the amount of downloads that they have. So as we can see, the amount of websites that they currently have is at 1.85 million. So that is huge. It's definitely becoming one of the top rated plugins uh, in the world for speed optimization. So I'd highly recommend giving it a go. All right, so now let's get into the good stuff. We're gonna talk about the optimization settings, how you can actually make the most of WP Rocket. All right, so I'm on my website, Official Daniel Proctor, and I use WP Rocket um, for all my sites, just so you know. What you'll notice is you cannot find it in the plugin search. So if you try and search WP Rocket in here, you will not find it. You will have to go here and uh, actually buy the plugin from their website. 
you can download the plugin directly from there. And then what you do is you go back to your WordPress dashboard, you go to upload plugins, and then you upload the plugin here and activate it. Very simple process, but yeah, they don't have it available in the search because there's not a free version of WP Rocket as of yet. All right, so next you will notice once you've installed the plugin, you'll have this little WP Rocket thing at the top. Um, it has settings, click cache. Sometimes it will have OP cache, depends on your server, preload cache and documentation, all that kind of stuff. If there's anything missing on your one, it's probably because we haven't gone through the settings yet if you're just installing it. So what you'll also notice on the left-hand side is under settings, it'll be here, WP Rocket. All right, so we're on the dashboard now of WP Rocket and you'll see you've got your license, which for mine it's unavailable. I have the unlimited license. Expiration's not available because it's unlimited. You'll see they have a Rocket CDN. I haven't actually tested this one out, but I've heard it's quite good. It is new. I don't have any feedback on that at the moment. You'll also notice on the right-hand side, we've got clear cache, preload cache, and purge OP cache. Um, I don't use any of these buttons here. I only use the ones up the top here, just because it's way easier. There's not that much left um, on the dashboard page. Now over to the cache page. So basically, this is the settings that I recommend and use um, for all of my websites. It depends on your theme again. So if your theme is like a little bit quirky or whatever, you'll find out how quirky it is because you'll put some of these settings on. And if it does affect the front end, you will notice it. And you can just go back and turn these settings off. But these are the ones that I recommend um, that don't affect the front end as much as what I've tried before. And they give you the best performance for the least like issues. All right, so the first thing you want to do is go to mobile cache and you want to check these both on. So basically what this does is it creates a separate caching file for mobile devices. This is very important because your website loads differently on a mobile device. At least most websites do. It doesn't load all the same content that the desktop version does. If you find that a website, um, your website is using everything the same, like it's a one pager, um, you know, some people still have one page websites, then you don't need the mobile cache. It'll be fine without it. Next, we have the user cache. I don't use this, but if you have a, a website where you have people logging in to the website, it could be helpful. But just bear in mind dynamic content, meaning things that change in the back end of your website, you don't generally want cached. So if there's things updating when people log in, for example, like there's new orders or stuff like that, basically you don't want the order uh, the order pages to be cached because otherwise they might not see the latest order that they've made. It might just show the previous one in the cache. Cache lifespan, I keep this to 15 hours. You can have it less or more. Really what it means is um, you know, how often do you update your website? If you don't update your website a lot, then have it a longer period of time because the longer you can have your cache lifespan means the least times that it will have to regenerate the entire cache. Now, 15 hours is, is generally quite a lot. It does see here reduced lifespan to 10 hours or less if you notice issues seem to appear periodically. This is because things can update in the background and then your cache is still trying to load content that might not be there if a plugin updated. Generally, 15 hours is fine. I leave it at that. Some people do like one or two hours, and I think that's uh, not enough. All right, so file optimization. Here we have CSS files as number one. I do minify CSS files. I don't combine and I don't use CSS optimization. JavaScript files. So here I removed jQuery and I minified JavaScript files. I don't combine them and I load JavaScript deferred. I use safe mode and I delay JavaScript execution. In the media settings, I enable for images, uh, iframes, videos, uh, replace YouTube frames with preview and I disable emojis. Embeds, I disable as well. And I don't use WebP compatibility. Preload, now this is one of the most important settings I can recommend you. So what this is, I'm gonna show you just a live example of it. All right, so I'm on the front page of my website. Now say for example, I'm thinking about going to this button here. As you can see in the bottom left, there's a little like link popping up and you can see that that's related to this button. Now generally what happens is someone will go to this link, they click on it 
and they have to wait for the website to load basically. What preload does is if you're hovering over this button, it will automatically know that you're thinking about going to that link and it'll load the information for that page before the person even clicks on it. So that way when they click on that website link, it goes and sends them to that page instantly rather than waiting for that content to load. So it's really useful. It speeds up your website a lot and it's just a really good setting to have. All right, after active preloading, there's active sitemap based cache preloading and um, Yoast SEO XML sitemap preloading. Basically what this is, is the plugin WP Rocket will search for all the links on your website using the SEO XML sitemap and it will preload all of them. This takes time, so depending on how many pages you have will depend on how long it takes to preload all of the links. And here finally is the preload links button. So this is the one that you want to check on for that um, example I just showed you before. And you'll notice underneath that um, there's prefetch DNS request. Now this is a good setting to have if you're using um, a content delivery network. I use content delivery networks for all of my websites and I really recommend you use them. Please let me know in the comments below if you would like me to do a video talking about content delivery networks and how they work and how you can integrate it with WP Rocket. All right, so the next tab we have is advanced page rules. Um, so this is handy if you have some pages which you don't want to cache, for example, the order page or members page. You can put those links in there. You can also never cache uh, certain cookies, never cache user agents, and also you can uh, have always post URLs. You can cache query strings and yeah. Next we have database. This is really helpful. Um, a lot of websites, you know, once you've been editing and you've just you launched your website, you've got so many revisions, you've got so many drafts, uh, you actually won't realize how many you have until you come to this part of the plugin and then you'll see like 300 and something revisions in your database and you can just go down here and click save changes and it'll optimize all of these and remove them. Obviously, you know, be careful about removing your drafts if you are, you know, thinking about publishing them later. They will be gone permanently. So just make sure that you've done with everything and you're happy with the website before you click that button. All right, so the next tab we have is CDN. This is my favorite part of the plugin. Basically what the CDN integration lets you do is connect your content delivery network to WP Rocket and your WordPress site. What you do is you copy a link and then place it in here and then you can choose which files that you actually want the CDN to use. I recommend using images, but you can also use all files if you would like to. So I wanna show you an example of how that looks once your um, CDN is connected. So if you go back to your website and then you go inspect and then you have a look in sources, and then under sources, you will see the link. And in here, you can see that it's copied the WP uploads file, and it has all of the images on the CDN network. All right, so next we have Heartbeat. Now, this is really uh, useful because what happens is with WordPress is often there's things happening in the background where there's things updating or, you know, there's some sort of like uh, database optimization happening and this could slow your website down. What happens is with Heartbeat and WP Rocket is it lets you choose how often that activity happens so that it reduces the amount of uh, resources your servers having to use constantly. This can make it much more effective for your server's performance overall and it's just a really nice feature to have. All right, so next we have the add-ons tab. All right, so as you can see, we've got Google Analytics tracking, we've got the Facebook pixel, and we've got Varnish. Starting with the Google tracking, basically what this allows you to do is it allows you to use that tracking link that you get from Google Analytics and host it locally rather than having it hosted with them. So it's one less file to load when your page loads and it increases the overall performance of your website. Same with the uh, Facebook pixel, you can host that pixel locally rather than having to use the Facebook server. Varnish is only used uh, on certain servers, so you just have to use this periodically if your server uses it. Oh, and also I must mention WP Rocket does integrate well with Cloudflare. Um, you have that setting here as well, just so that you don't have duplicate settings on your Cloudflare settings, you can have that integrated really well here. If you do want security, you can use that as well. It is recommended for security on websites that have high volume of traffic and it is a great service that constantly monitors your website's uptime and checks for any viruses and threats. All right, so lastly we have image optimization. Um, so this is a recommended add-on from WP Rocket 
they recommend you use Imagefire. What this does is it condenses your images down to a smaller file size without losing the appearance and it's called lossless images. So it's a really cool plugin and a way to reduce that file size on your website and it makes your website overall faster. All right guys, so once you have done all those settings, you can go back and click save on all of those pages and you should be right to go. If you do have any issues, what you do is you go to the home page. You can have a look and see if all of the um, layout is working fine. Then go to inspect and you can have a look and see if there's any errors in the console. Now you'll see them up here on the right hand side and you can check out what those console errors are. Mine here are just related to font files, so there's nothing to do with WP Rocket. Also, I would highly recommend checking the functionality on a mobile phone just to be sure that everything is working. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video. Um, if you do want to get WP Rocket, check the link in the description below and I'll see you on the next video.